what we're going to be looking at here are bonds retired between interest payment dates. In an, this example, we're going to have a gain here on the redemption, and it's going to be based on the reacquisition price and accrued interest on these bonds. Now, for example here, Corporation A issues $900,000 worth of bonds here at a 12% annual interest rate, and they're going to be for 10 years, and the bonds were issued at 106 or 106% of the par value, and they were issued here on 5120X1. And on 4120 x two, the bonds of a par value of $360,000 are going to be called at 102 here, or 102% of their par value. Plus, the accrued interest is going to have to be paid on these bonds, and then the bonds are going to be retired, at least the $360,000 worth here. And the interest is payable semi-annually here on 1-1 and 7-1 each year here. And the bonds are dated here on 1-1-20-X-1. Now, Corporation a uses a straight line method here for amortizing any bond premium or discount. So what we're going to have to be looking at here are two things that are coming into play here. It's going to be the issue amount here at 106 percent here and the uh, call amount here at 102 percent. So um, they were issued and they had to be paid back here at 106 percent of the bond uh, of value here but now they're act being called here and they're going to only have to pay 102 percent of the bond value that's being called here. And then the other thing is both the issue date here of 5120X1 and well let's just look at that first here. So the annual interest is paid here in 1-1 and 7-1 each year here but we're going to concentrate on this first payment here date here of 1-1. So we issued them here on 5120X1 that was four months after the first payment date here and that was between the interest payment dates here. 5-1 is between the January 1st date here and the July 1st date here, the two interest payment dates. And then they're being called back here on 4120X2 here, 11 months later. And that again is between the interest payment dates here, 1-1 and 7-1. 4-1 is actually three months after this first payment date here. Okay, so the first thing we have to do here is let's go down at this. We're going to be using the straight line method here, and we have to break down this amortization on these bonds in terms of months here. So let's look at it here. Our total months here, well, we've got 10 years, 12 months per year, so we're going to have 120 months. That's the stated months on these bonds here. Now the amortized months here, well, we got the total here of 120 months on the bonds, but they're being issued four months after the stated date here of 1-1. One, one. They're being issued here in 5-1. So we have, we're, we can't count these first four months here because they're only going to be outstanding here 116 months. That's what we're going to be looking at. The amortized, there's amort how they're amortized here and also the interest on these bonds. So difference between 120 months here and the four months af after the issue of the stated date here gives us 116 months. Now the actual amortized since the bond was issued here we're going to calculate to be 11 months and that's after the stated date. That's what we have to look at here. So the bond stated date here is 1120X1. They were issued here on 5120X1 and they were retired here on 4120X2. So for 20X1 we have eight months here. That would be the uh, uh, 5 one date here to the end of the year. So we've got eight months here in 20X1 that we're going to have amortized here. And then for 20X2 we're going to have three months. Now remember here they were retired here on 4 one 20X2 here and based on uh, the uh, January 1st date here we only have three months between January 1st here and a uh, 4 one or April 1st here. So that accounts for the three months here. So the total months that they would have been outstanding here that we would have amortized would have been the eight months here plus in 20X1 and three months here in 20X2 for 11 months total here. Now what we have to look what was remaining here to be amortized on these bonds. So we total, had a total here of 116 months that we'd have to amortize. Now we are uh, looking at the retirement date here. So the first 11 or 11 months here that we would have amortized here up to the retirement date the difference between the total amount here and those 11 months is going to give us 105 months that remain after the retirement date here that would uh, be amortized on these bonds here. So, and again, our example will be for paying interest annually. Even though we have semi-annual interest payments, we'll for ease of calculations, we'll just uh, look at paying this interest annually. Okay, all right. So let's go down here. 
Now, we ha remember we talked about that gain on redemption here because of that 106% issue um, percentage here versus the 102% callback percentage. So what we have to do is we're going to have calculate a gain here in the redemption of these bonds. And let's go look at how we'd calculate that. So first here, the reacquisition price, we have to pay that plus the accrued interest on the bond. So the reacquisition price was the $360,000 amount that we're acquiring here at 102%. So that gives us $367,200 here that we're going to have to pay plus the accrued interest. Well, that would be $360,000 worth here of bonds we're calling at 12 percent annual interest rate and they're going to be for the first three months of the year here because that's we're holding them and we're selling them uh, or buying them back here on 4-1 so we got three months between January here and April 1st so uh, three months in the year or three twelfths of the year times our interest rate here and the amount we're calling gives us ten thousand eight hundred dollars worth of accrued interest that we're going to have to pay on these bonds so the reacquisition price plus the accrued interest equals three hundred and seventy eight thousand dollars now we have to look and calculate the unamortized premium on these retired bonds well we have the we start out with this premium amount here fifty four thousand dollars remember we had the nine hundred thousand dollars issued at a hundred and six percent so we have a six percent premium on those bonds when they're issued here that that's going to give us uh, $54,000 here. So to calculate our unamortized premium here, we're going to take the premium amount here, the $54,000 at the issue date here, times the percentage here of the bonds that we're re requiring here. There are $360,000 of bonds being bought back of the total amount here of $900,000. So we've got that fractional amount here. And then we've got the fractional amount here of the remaining um, months out to be amortized in these bonds. So remain, remember we got 105 months here remaining here. That was uh, taking the 116 months total that would have been outstanding on these bonds less the first 11 months here. So the difference gives us 105 months divided by the total uh, number of months that would be amortized on these bonds, 116. So that fractional amount here times the fractional amount here of the bonds being retired times the uh, 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 on uh, the premium amount here, 54000 is going to give us an unamortized premium that remains on these bonds of $19,551. Okay, next for the accrued interest on the retired bonds. Those are 360000 times 12%. And remember, there's three months of uh, the first three months of the year here that the bonds uh, were sitting here before they were retired. So we have to pay that interest for three twelfths of a year. So the accrued interest here is $10,800. Same as what we calculated up above here. Okay, now for calculating our gain on redemption. So we take our reacquisition price plus the accrued interest. That was the $378,000 that we calculated up here. Now we have to subtract out the net carrying value of the bonds redeemed. Now remember, we have 360000 here in par value of this bonds redeemed, plus the unamortized uh, premium here of $19,551. That's what we calculated up here. So the sum total of the par value plus the unamortized premium here is $379,551. Now we have to also subtract out the accrued interest here of $10,800. So the net amount here between the carrying value here and the accrued interest, we subtract compare that to the reacquisition price here of 378000 and we're going to come up with a gain on the redemption here of $12,351. And the reasoning here is that we, we've paid less. We've only paid $378,000 here to redeem these bonds, and their carrying value plus the accrued interest is $391,902. So just comparing those two amounts here, we're going to come up with the gain here of $12,351. Okay, so we've taken care of this here to calculate our gain here in the redemption. Now let's go and look at how we'd record this. Okay, so the bond interest are payable here on 1 1 and 7 1 semi annually, but we're just going to be looking at a year end payment here for ease of calculations. Now, the other thing is we, we noted here before is that the seller of the bonds has to pay the buyer the accrued interest from the last interest payment date. So the last interest payment date here would have been 1 1 of x2 here, and they would have been retired here on 4 1 of x2. So 
Okay, so the bond has three months of accrued interest from 1-1 one, one here through 4-1. So that's three-twelfths of a year here, or excuse me, three divided by 12, three-twelfths of a year here in the accrued interest and the amortization of the premium. Well, remember, our accrued interest was 10800 we calculated here. And then the amortization, we also calculated that here of $19,551. Okay, so now let's go down and look at how we'd record this. So we're going to have our cash account here as an asset here. And then our liability accounts here on our balance sheet, we'll have our bonds payable. We're going to have that a premium account here on our bonds payable. And then we're also going to have an interest payable here on those bonds. And then we're on our income statement here, we're going to have this, we're going to have a gain on our redemption here and also our interest expense. So let's just go through these accounts here and we'll just start out with our cash account here on our balance sheet. Again, remember the bond is issued here in 51X1. So on the retirement date here, 41X2, we're going to have two, I got it broken down in two cash amounts that have to be paid out or credited to our cash account. First would be for the $360,000 worth here retired at 102% of par. So that equals $367,200. And then the accrued interest here of $10,800. We calculated 360 times 12%, 3 twelfths of a year. Okay, so we credit or reduce our cash account by that amount. Now, for our bonds payable on our balance sheet, again, at the issue date here, 51X1, we would have credited it here for $900,000. Now, at our retirement date here, uh, 4120X2, where we retire $360,000 worth of bonds here, we would debit or reduce our bonds payable by that amount here. Now for our, our premium on our bonds payable. Remember when they were issued here, 51X1, we had that premium here of $54,000 here on the bonds, so we would credit or increase our premium account by that amount here. Now, uh, for our first um, amortization here on 1231X1. Now, we're really concentrating on the retirement here, but for our calculations, we're going to show the uh, uh, amortization here in 1231x1. So that was simply the $54,000 worth of premium here. And remember, there was eight months here for the first year. That was May 1st through the end of the year here. So we have eight months of the total number of months to be amortized here. So um, eight divided by 116 times the premium here gives us $3,724. That would be the amortized amount here in 1231X1 for those uh, bonds that were outstanding here. So that would debit our premium account or reduce our premium by that amount here. Now, the other thing is, we remember we have that $19,551 here. That was calculated here on the retirement here of those bonds. That was the unamortized premium that we calculated here, 19551 So we reduce our premium account by that amount here. Then I've got it broken down here. We've got two uh, items here to deal with here. And well, the premium, remember that was on 4-1, the retirement date, 4-1-X-2 here. So now we have two items here to deal with at the end of the year here on 12-31-X-2 here. And that would be uh, for on the $540,000 worth of bonds that are still outstanding. So we have that premium amount here, 54,000. And that was for the first year, uh, first 12 months of the, total 12 months of the year here from January 1st through December 31st. So we have 12 months here um, divided by the total number of months outstanding, 116 here. And take the, that fractional amount times 60%. Well, where do we get to 60%? So let's go down here and look at that. So we have $900,000 worth of bonds here and we retire 360,000. So the difference here uh, divided by the total number of bonds outstanding here, $900,000 is gonna give us 60%. So we go up here, 60% times our fractional amount here times our premium gives us $3,351 of amortization here on that total amount here of $540,000 worth of bonds still outstanding. Now on the $360,000 amount retired, and remember here, they were only outstanding here for three months from January 1st through April 1st here. So again, the premium amount here, 54,000 times that fraction of three months times uh, outstanding here for the year here times uh, that fractional amount here times 40% in this case. So how do we get the 40%? So if we go down here again, you see the $360,000 worth um, that were retired here divided by the total amount here, 900000 outstanding, gives us 40% here. So 40% here, that fraction, three months 
uh, fractional amount here that we're outstanding uh, for the year here times the total premium here gives us $558. So we've accounted for our premium amortization here at the end of the year here, 1231X2 broken down by the 540000 amount still outstanding here in the $360,000 retired here. Okay, so the next thing, let's just move down to our interest payable here on our balance sheet. And again, we're just going to be looking at the end of the year here. So the total interest payable here on 1231X2 would simply be the total uh, $540,000 outstanding here times those are the amount of bonds still outstanding here times the 12% interest rate. That's going to give us $64,800. So we credit our interest payable by that amount, $64,800. And then the balancing amount here would go to interest expense that we'll look at here on our income statement. And the debit or interest expense here for $64,800. So uh, let's look at this interest expense here. Again, it's on our income statement. So what we had here at the retirement date, we had that accrued interest here of $10,800. And we would have debited our interest expense by that amount here at the retirement date here for 1x2. So the debit here to $10,800 would have balanced with our cash account here where we paid it here at $10,800. $800. So the credit here to cash $10,800, interest expense we recognize here at $10,800. And then we got that, remember the end of the year interest here, 1231X2 here, and that was simply what we uh, had on our interest payable here, that we credited it for $64,800. 12% times the 540,000 outstanding for the whole year. 12 months out of the 12 months gives us a debit here or increase in our interest expense on our income statement by $64,800. And then lastly here again on this redemption or amount on our income statement. Remember we calculated that here and that was on 41X24. Credit our gain here in income statement $12,351. And remember that was just the reacquisition price here uh, less the carrying value of the amount redeemed here plus the accrued interest here. Okay, so we've taken care of these uh, bonds that were retired between interest payment dates. And what came into play here was both the issue date here where it was issued between interest payment dates and also the retirement here between interest payment dates. And we had to, because of that, we had to figure out our amortization here on a monthly basis or divide it for our fractional amounts here. We had to determine, determine it on a monthly basis for the uh, bonds that were outstanding here and then the bonds that were uh, retired here. So okay, that takes care of our uh, bonds retired between interest payment dates. And here we really looked at the retirement of the bonds rather than the issue of the bonds because there would have been more calculations involved here for the issue of the bonds. But they both came into play when we did this retirement.